All right, here he is, Reno Sutmatch, a coach's life. We're just going to talk about everything. They've got uh, University Prep Obama Academy. Once again, early part of the season, I come back down for my yearly visit. They're undefeated. It's just how they roll. Before we get to any football, let me ask you, where did this whole thing start for you? Where did you grow up? Studentville. That's what I thought. You graduated from Studentville. I went to Studentville Central. Okay. So, graduated in 67. Played football. We played against really good uh, Pittsburgh team. Like Wesley House. Ooh, the dog. They were good. They had the Wesley Barnett was their tailback. And uh, they had a real good nose guard that went to the pit. Wesley Barnett went to Notre Dame. You know, that was in 65 football. Right there. Pete the Prairie was right by himself. Oh, man. They kicked our butt. Yeah, he was the man. So I really love the fact that you have a city in your school. It seems like I always end up coming down here. It must be karma, because I love the city school. Yeah, Coach Barry does a great job. But, uh, why do you, I mean, I'm glad you do that, but why do you have them on the schedule, it seems like, every year? Just that. Or top that one. Yeah, just that. Uh, you know, you game early in the year, and uh, they're available. We play all the dice a few times. We play Wesley House. We got back to, uh, I think it was, 2020, maybe, or 2021, I'm not sure. Uh, we got beat in the opener uh, by uh, Ben Hills. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, other than that, you know, we played uh, Woodland Hills, we played uh, McKee Sport, we played up for Sinclair, so we played a lot of sport in the area. So you realize TOV was a part of the game last night. All of the top stars on TOV now, like Mr. Steinbach, who I worked with his grandfather for many years at KDK Radio. Of course, uh, Bill Hillbrook, our grandson, Jack, was on the call last night. Jamie Ely, part of the University of Pittsburgh, that next take program we have overnight. So, Bill Phillips. Yeah. So you realize we're bringing all of our top-notch talent to make even a more of well, they're, they're, they're stepping up in Pittsburgh with the TOV night. So <laughs> it's a step up. Listen, I love you. I love everything about you. I'm not going to give your age away, but how much longer are you going to do this? Do you know? Too much for it. No. Day to day. You want it today, I know that. Well, okay, so you graduated from Central. Where'd you go to college? I went to college out in Nebraska for a year, Iron Scott College. Then I went to transfer to Akron University. Played at Akron for three years. Did you? Yeah. Um, practice, I don't know if I played it all. Well, that's, that's big time. So, you come back home, you're, you're a teacher in student, but when did you start coaching? Yeah, what was your first year? I went to United Local for us right. for six years. Right. And then I came here with Bill Bourne, who's still coaching, he's 90 years old. Oh. He's still coaching up at Niles and coaching the quarterbacks. And then I coached with him for a year. And then uh, we all got fired, and I got moved to junior high for three years. And then Bob Denver brought me back in high school. Just speak up a little bit louder. Okay. Yeah, I know you're soft spoken right. before the game. I need more of that sideline coach. Okay. Um, what is it about this place that you love? I, I still love coming here. I wish I could come more often to Stephenville. But I just, I don't know. I think the, the Potters and Beaver Local last night, Coach McKenzie, big win for Coach Cusick, hard fought win, come from behind when it gets a tough Beaver Local team. But, you know, uh, Jack with their team. That's amazing. 46 years in the league, 23. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So anyway, TOB was there and I said, you know what? I had a busy morning. I said, I got the evening off at the radio. I said, I'm going to come down and see the coach. And he's always just so nice and lets me come here. But man, I, Sunset Boulevard, University Boulevard. Man, there's just something about Stephenville. Yeah, it's, it's a great place. I mean, it might be slipping a little bit as far. I think the, the thing that, that I like best about coaching here, the number one is administration wants to be 100% everything. Yep. Not just sports, but Usually academic everything. I mean, well, academics is a is a uh, prerequisite. It's just you know, it's just a, uh, to go without saying you want to be great in that, but also in sports and theater. And I mean, the school schools are just the number one in the valley. You still hang out in school once in a while? Well, I go to school every day. Every day I go to school, and uh, you know, I enjoy I enjoy getting up going to school. I enjoy it. I enjoy coaching. The thing I like best is the week. School was made up of week. It's yeah. starting to slip a little bit now because of the TV and the, uh, all the uh, all the technical stuff. But uh, student girls are made up of three people, and uh, I think that's what I like best about it. Because it goes down there, student stuff down there with the kids and, and, and it's just uh, it's just a great place.
use of code. All right, this brings me to my other point. You kind of jump started it. Um, you know, I've been trying to get this US steel and pond steel deal done. I think it's good for the future. I think it's a good deal for both sides. It makes US steel stable and even stronger. Lots of cash flow, once again, is necessary to make improvements in the Mon Valley. But it also secures, I think, future jobs, union jobs in this region. But the reason I want to bring it up is you. I mean, you grew up in Steubenville. You understand manufacturing, what it was all about. And one of the reasons why things have changed because those numbers aren't what they used to be. But during the height of the steel industry, how much of a factor was that in Steubenville? There were 41,000 people in Steubenville back in the day. There's 18,000 now. 41,000? 41,000 in the high 60s. And maybe in the 70s. But, uh, you know, bleeding steel, river steel. Um, but I mean, it was just still no. I think that, I think that uh, 14,000 people worked in the mills. And I'm not just saying they're all from Steubenville, but that's how big it was. And I would argue 1,000, maybe 1,500. But the new places opened up the weirdness, so that had to help. It's supposed to be 900 jobs. But uh, like I said, there was 41,000 people, and now there's 18 in Steubenville, and it supports three schools. 18,000 people, we have Steubenville uh, Playground, we have Steubenville Central, we share the town in uh, Indian Creek, or one of the goals, that is six wards. So a town of 14,000 supports a great school. And I think they do a pretty good job of that. Well, you know, Dealing Pit in Fallerby is now owned by the Pond Steel. I mean, if you talk to anybody who lived there or worked there, it completely changed the landscape. So big picture, deal's got to get done. That will also help increase numbers, more jobs. It helps the schools, it helps the tax base, it helps health care, it helps the uh, foundation brick and mortar, more tax dollars coming in, so better roads and bridges, and it's all good when you have manufacturing. What do you think about today's game, high school football, um, where it was, say, when you first started coaching? It's become a conglomerate. I mean, it's everywhere. Well, when I first started coaching, I was playing the phone booth. I was better than an air, airport runway. Right. So that's that's the difference. You know, condition is much more uh, a factor now than it was back in the day. And you used to play in a box and, and run it on both ways. But right now you're a, you're a sprint every play back in the huddle. Sometimes no huddle. Sometimes 15 seconds between snaps. Sometimes 30 seconds. Sometimes five seconds. I mean, it's just it's it just I mean, it, it's it's go. It's go. And uh, the thing I think that's coming back to the left is coming back to the running game. We've never left the running game. You know, I get teamed by a lot of people. I had somebody work. I had somebody tell me that we have a junior high offense. So I get about I get about 10 or 15 texts every week now about our junior high offense and our great school defense. But it works. And uh, look at the 49ers. Look at the Tampa. Arthur Schmidt and all those dealers. They're just, just uh, you know, the running game is coming back. And, and you watch went from running backs to receivers and so I come back, everybody's in the, everybody's fighting for a running back now because that game's coming back. The offensive line is uh, offensive line is important in two ways now. You have to be a better athlete to be an offensive line today because you can't the ball you got a pass block. The pass block is very difficult. That's why they have tackle in the pros of the tackle the opposite of the end. It's paid so much money. And uh, other than that, the further you move the ball in the pros. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the West Virginia. Not what's happening now. We all follow them now. Of course, the Coons Market Black and Gold Sunday show. We'll look back at it. We're going to preview all that stuff. There's Coons Public and Coons Sports Reports. And one of our many incredible people that helped us in Coons Market, uh, Mr. Carson, the folks at United Dairy, Martin Sperry. Anywhere you look down in this part of the country, you'll find United Dairy products. I want to give him a nice shout out. But Pitt, West Virginia, I can't help but think John Mead and John Mead. Some of the people that I remember, Jack and Show, both days ago, still a very special rivalry. I mean, you think of Joe Pog, God rest his soul, Penn State. I mean, there's just, I don't know, a lot of memories. Coach Narduzzi, yeah, he's the same way. So, I know. He does, he hasn't, he, he, he reminds he, me a lot. He coaches Pitt the way Pitt needs to be coached. Great defense, running game, and uh, uh, they might not get the players that they used to get. But you got to remember back in the day when Pitt was great, it was Limit on scholarships. And I can remember somebody saying John Davis when they brought in 85 players. In so the first was, week. Nothing. But, you know, there's 
different rules and regulations now. And uh, uh, I just think that, I, I think that uh, Coach Narduni does a great job and, and uh, we follow them, uh, you know, we try to emulate what they do defensively. And uh, I just think that he's a, he's a very, very good coach and never been fundamentals. If you don't need fundamentals, you don't have to go back to them. I still agree about the Narduni. It is Zachary Shore Stadium, Mark 937, the Panda City League School was of course made in Harris 35 years ago. It was at West Virginia when they played a the guy from East Liverpool, Ohio, who holds in Notre Dame, and thinking a great running back. So I mean, I still think it's Tony Dorset watching him playing at the University of Pittsburgh. Look, I grew up. You mean Tony Dorset? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dorset, Dorset. But um, I remember back in the day watching great quarterbacks like me and obviously Marino throwing the football. And I love it, don't get me wrong, but there's still something about a running back. Oh, you yeah. know, I was watching David Montgomery for the Detroit Lions the other day against the Rams in that overtime. I don't know if you've seen the last couple of minutes of that game, but that's what a running back is supposed to do. Or the backup running back for the 49ers. Unbelievable. I mean, he gets to call McCaffrey is out and he steps in. It just goes to show you, and when you get that opportunity, you've got to make the most of it. Um, anyway, just you in this sport and your love of Student Bill Big Red, I know you know it in your heart. It's for the love of the game. But do you understand what people think about you outside of Student Bill? I can tell you, when I tell people I got caught up with being a suck on, no matter who I'm talking to, and I've got a lot of people involved, past and present, in football, they all know what you've done here. You've had, and I know it's not just you, but you've had an amazing run. You know, we just, uh, you know, my, I've been blessed my whole life, my family, my job. Uh, but I think that sometimes people outside the area enjoy what's going on in other places more than the people inside the area. I think that people here really don't realize success that the High Valley, not just us, but the High Valley's had. And uh, I get back to the weak people, and the studio is made up of weak people. And you look at the OBC, there's 50 teams in the OBC, maybe 25 or at least half of them are from Ohio. And only two teams from Ohio won the state championship. Right. And that's Studio Big Red and Studio Central. So that says something about the city of Studio. I'm taking away anything from anybody else, but that says something about Studio. Try to make our try to make our team like the Pittsburgh teams. I mean, they get out in the army and uh, they just uh, yeah, it's great. And, and, and Western PA has fallen off just as much as the High Valley as far as players going. I mean, the number. You know, if you take if you talk to the top ten quarterbacks in this field of, of, of pro football, five of them got to be from Pittsburgh. Right here, right, 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 right. And now it's you know it's just uh, we went from forty one thousand to eighteen. They've gone from uh, Whatever. Well, let me tell you where there's some similarities. By the way, Power Bowls and Friday Night Lights, great people like M7, Allegheny Health Network, and Highmark, Coombs Quality Foods, so many more. Thanks to each and every one of them. We've got Mars at Mount Clinton tonight. Coach Kat Borovich, who played at Pitts, played at North Coast with Jackson Curry, I'm sure you know that name. And, uh, of course, you've got Sean Patrick, who played at Mount Clinton with Coach Borko when they won the state title last year. He now is their head coach. These two teams coming up tonight. A lot of similarities when I come to this beautiful community that I get the same vibe when I'm in and I'm there all the time. Now, the clip, you know, today at one time had thousands of people. You had 14,000 people working in the mill, $2 million worth of paychecks being pumped into the streets every two weeks. But really, when I come here, I get the same vibe that when I go to Alicutla. It's about young men, great coaches, and that love of football. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, I don't think student love will change when they come. I'll say that students love of sports, not just yeah, football. Well, love, of, love of sports, and, uh, and there's people in the community that, that, that support the sports, and they support sports that take like spot bar. They support, you know, win, lose, or draw. They're, they're supporting you. Uh, for a student, they support you, and they're just a uh, zillion people like that. And, uh, and we have a lot of people that just that donate to the Blue Club and uh, just let me talk about one other person real quick. And I was down here for the funeral. And whenever I come here, I always think of doing we and DJ Driggs, and obviously my dear friend Josh Silver, Josh Cleese, and Teddy Arno, of course. I 
time did. There's duty, something. Duty's better on coaches staff on Saturdays. Yeah, a lot of time. Yeah, and uh, he just uh, he was a Jack. I remember him when he when he was playing ball. And, oh, he played. Uh, he played at Catholic Central. Yeah, he for a while. Yeah, and uh, just uh, you know, when he fell in love with making money, he made money. You know, <laughs> one of the first times we did this, you know, we were DJs. Yeah, right. And I'll never forget. I said, whatever you want. And he had a bowl of ice cream. You know, according to Frank Dawson, that's all he wants to eat during the football season, ice cream. I don't know if there's any truth to that. Digger was here today. Was he? Yeah, he, uh, he's with the uh, gentleman from Florida. They're going down to Marietta to, uh, they want to see something. They want to see the Florida. And the guy from Florida wanted to see our stadium. He said he heard so much about it. Digger. So he left right before he came. Oh, my hero. My hero. Um, anyway, let's just talk a little football. Tell me about your team. Well, um, our team right now is we're not we're not actually playing as, as well as I hope to uh, at this time. But what we are doing, we're competing. We're going to be behind all three games to come back and one. So at least at least our guys are giving an effort. And uh, it's not that we're nobody's playing bad. We're just not playing. We're just not. It's not the chemistry yet. Yeah. Right. The chemistry. One guy misses this play, one guy misses that play, but eight guys are doing great. And, and the chemistry is so important in football, and uh, that, that's why football is the greatest sport ever invented. Because uh, you know, you, you really believe that. Ball, you, you take the rich, you take the poor, you take the white, you take the black, you take the Chinese, you take the, you take everything and throw it on barrel, and that's that's good. you're going to make a team out of that. Right. And uh, too bad you can be like that in life. Well. I don't remember being life like it in the sports because the, 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 the kids here suffered together. I mean, they went through two and eight together, they went through camp together. You know, they know what each guy what each guy went through to get to where we're at. And uh, sports will never be emulated by right. by life. I, I don't think too bad. But uh, you know, nobody agrees with me. But the greatest coach that ever lived, the greatest one day ever coached was 1980. What happened in 80? When we beat the Russians. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the greatest coaching Oh, Miracle on Ice. Ever. Miracle on Ice was the greatest coaching job in the history of athletics, in my opinion. Just that one time. They might have played ten times and beat us nine, but that one time. Our guys went out there with the, with the positive attitude they were going to beat their butt. Yeah. You know what I'm starting to notice here, his love of his heritage being Italian. He kind of praised Coach Narduzzi, who I love. He played at YSU and uh, made me think of Michael Ruzioni, who of course was a part of that miracle. Well, right? yeah. So hey, it's all good. But the coach. Yeah, yeah. The coach, I mean, he, that was the greatest one day. Like, like uh, it wasn't an upset. We actually fought. We went out on that ice that they were going to beat him. And I remember I was scout with Coach Watt. We were there. So they cut during the game, and uh, I think it was, I'm really not exactly sure where we were, but it was somewhere up in that area, and the game's going on, and the announcer is ringing the bell, and the referee's one, he's ringing the bell, he said, USA is just being rushed. Do you believe on me? Do you believe in miracle? And it was the greatest. Uh, you see, Al Michaels, who made the call, was on the call last night, Buffalo's big one over Miami, so if he can still do it, you can still do it. Your mother, I guess All he's doing is using his mouth. So. Yeah, let me tell you something. That's he's smart. good at it, though. Oh, he's really good. Let me, let me just ask you. Because I, look, I, I've done these things thousands and thousands, television for years, radio. I mean, my life, they'll always have something to show that will have me featured in. Because I can't even tell you how much is still out there that I probably forgot that I did good stuff. But I love talking about it, other than X and O's. I mean, I did that for years. Anybody can do that if you put the time in. I get it a part of the game, but the real thing is the backstory about who these people are and the, the, the path that they take to get where they are. Mom and Dad, can you talk about your parents? Well, my dad came here in 1937. He was 14 years old. And he never saw his dad when he came to America. And uh, he had an older brother that was uh, 18, 17 or 18 when they came. And my grandmother, my grandfather came here when he was 18. Every time we went back, he got married. One time my grandmother got pregnant. The next time my grandmother got, well, 
Well, she didn't want to move to America. But when the fascists started to take over, yeah. it was time for her to pick up and leave. And that's, so my dad came in in 37. And uh, my, my grandfather on my mother's side was a bootlegger. They all oh, mother, my, oh, my, my grandfather, he lived in Steubenville. When she was born, he was on, she was born in Anchorage. That's what I she, Yeah. So uh, they met in 47. I got married in 48, and I've come in 49. And uh, I was the first person in my family, either side, to marry out of the nationality. I married an Irish girl, and uh, they called him Kay Corleone. Oh. And, uh, but, uh, How many kids do you have? I have three. And what are they doing? The daughter, daughter of 54, she's the manager over here at the uh, Don't worry about it. Who else? Come on, I should know TJ Max. Oh. Then uh, her husband coached with us. Yeah. My son's an offensive coordinator. His wife's a principal of East. And then my other daughter teaches at Harding, uh, and her husband's our athletic director. So and we have eight grandchildren. Wow. And uh, we all live within eight houses of each other, so we call it the combat. Oh, so we see your grandkids every day. We we at my house every Sunday. So we get the meatballs. Every Sunday we're all there, except the kids are in college and all that. I wonder why Rich John would love this town so much. Every time I come here, I get more heartwarming stories. Last thing I want to do, I know you got to get ready with your team here. Um, I know you can't say who, what, when, where, and why, or how, but maybe just a handful of really special players that you look back on and think, man, that was some kind of you know, give, me, give me just a couple that stand out. As opposed, I mean, now, yeah, it, the story's still being told, but in your journey, Harry Wilson, tell me about it. Harry Wilson played in Nebraska. Wow. He's the only player, not the coach. Oh, okay. He's the only player in the history of NCAA that started in the Orange Bowl by Gold Sugar Bowl. He played for Nebraska against Alabama twice, and it's Arkansas once. Doug, first person I've ever talked about. The second person I've ever talked about is Calvin Jones. Alan Jones, yeah. just uh, Island Trophy winner. He's only 75 of them. He's one of them. He was the yes. first African American on the color sports magazine. And, uh, first and he was a defensive player of the MVP in Canada. And the reason why he went to Canada, he got drafted by the Detroit Lions. He wanted to play for the Cleveland Browns. So he had to go play there for a year. And he came home with a flight home after the All Star game. He was killed in an airplane accident. After both of you. Yeah. And the third one will probably be uh, an episode of Zach Morris. He's in Canada right now. He's been the big MVP two or three times. He won two or three great cups. And um, he was 30 and those are coming back here. So if I had to say three people, you know, there's a lot more. But if you ask me to say three of them, mm -hmm. and those three, and, you know, the trio that went to Iowa in 1951, the other uh, Bourbon was the first uh, in Ohio back to West for 2,000 yards in 1929. Just a lot of goes to history right there on the wall. Uh, with the quarterbacks, the Russian uh, receivers, uh, leading tacklers, interceptions. Uh, Stevie, Stevie Davis intercepted 22 passes in three years. So there's a lot of history on this wall. You keep putting more and more history on this is amazing. Those are all state. That's it. All our playoff games, the eye of the pass. You still get the same gym? Or gym? Yeah, but a little bit more tired. <laughs> no, I, I feel like I'm still helping. I don't feel like that I'm, the I'm near. I don't feel like I'm near what I could be or should be. But I think that you I'm look here. tremendous. Right? I said to you, I said, I have seen you this fit. And you're like, I always want to.
I've been at this team a long time. I've been to every stadium. I've met every coach. To the point now where a lot of these head coaches I covered when they were players. Every school, every classification, West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, there's still something really incredible about Cardinals on a Friday night. I mean, I don't think, if so, somebody would say to me, where can I go? Give me a couple of places that I can go and experience Friday night lights. If they were anywhere near the Ohio border, I would say Harding State. I wish you would tell our players that. Well, they maybe, they'll, maybe they'll see this on. They need, they need to know. I mean, having the opportunity to play in this place, this, this incredible history that's been made here, to be a part of that, that's something you're going to get to do the rest of your life. Thank you.